Good evening and welcome to another Monday Night Live. Simon and I here every Monday, 6 p.m., live from the studio. Tonight, we've got a couple of very special guests joining us uh, and announcing yeah, announcing a very special partnership for us mm. here at Precision Golf. So stay tuned for that in a little while. But let's talk the Masters. Mm. Now, I watched absolutely it? none of it because I was in <laughs> Italy uh, and uh, my VPN didn't work. So, uh, nah. But well, I was following it on the, uh, on the leaderboard, of course, and, and Scotty Scheffer sort of won at a canter, really. Yeah, I think, I think I got a better appreciation of how good his short game was this week more than any other week. I think that keeping it together, the way that the start of each round, the Saturday, Sunday rounds, he could have just fallen away. And then he just comes back around the turn with about four birdies and an eagle and just waves goodbye at the rest of the field. Yeah. And just, he's incredibly impressive. Incredibly impressive. Did you pick Scheffler last week? I can't remember. I think I chickened out and picked, picked Scheffler, yeah. Did you? Yeah, um, I picked Aberg. So we, we had the top yeah, two. Yeah. So that's. But I think what does go to show in, in, in the tough conditions, as we were saying last time, the, the top four or five, you know, Scheffler, Auberg, Morikawa, Homer, you know, ball strikers, tough conditions, great iron players. Um, and yeah, that's why they're at the top. As mm. usual, we've got mm. both of the discs with us, so if you have mm. any questions, do feel to free to fire them over. Simon, for all of your club equipment needs and myself for any mm. good golf coaching. If you're watching us on the Good Golf Coaching app channel or the Precision Golf, do give us a like and a share, and thanks very much for joining us. Let's talk a little bit about Tiger Woods. Uh, it would be a miss to not talk about Tiger. It was great to see him miss the cut, but it was sad to see him... Make the cut, you mean? Sorry, made the cut rather. I mean, it was sad. I mean, it was sad. He would have done yeah, it was sad day, to yeah. sad to see him sort of limp around in '82. Do you think that could be a sign of maybe it's just another mm. chink towards? Oh, do I really still think I can win? I mean, it was quite interesting. I was listening to Faldo talk to I think it was Rich Beam or mm. or someone, and and it was talking about how how much deep resilience as the man got to go out there and and it, it, like the third round I saw some highlights on YouTube yeah. it really didn't look like he could keep it on the golf course all of a sudden on a, on a golf course that was that was is pretty wide mm. and, and also short game wasn't looking that great either I think the the finishing the, the late early and finishing Friday finishing the first round playing I think that finished him completely I think yeah. He was actually walking up the hill better than I expected on Sunday afternoon on 18, yeah. and, and it was less of a limp than I expected to see. But I think oh, it is, it's none of us want to say it, but you say he's got to he's got to really want to be there to keep putting himself through that. And I wonder whether this might be the last year we see him at all four majors. Yeah, um, I think so too. Unless his levels go up to you know what he can do in one round across all four. I think otherwise. It's a tough ask. Yeah. yeah. A beautiful segue into this week, uh, mm. the ladies' first major of the year. Uh, our very own trainer, Kate Dav Davey, fresh off the back of a top three mm. in Cologne, earning her place at the World Champs in Nice in June. Mm. Big congrats Elite congratulations. Yeah, 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 goes out to her. Mm. Super, super time. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was a touch, touch and go right at the end uh, with that last wall ball, but we won't, extra 20 meter run. We won't yeah, talk yeah. about that. Charlie and Georgia have headed yeah. out there, fresh off the back of a solid week's training with Kate. Mm. They'll be prepping and uh, looking forward to, obviously, the first major of the year. Speaking with both of them, I mean, Charlie's had a great start to the yeah. year. Ge Georgia is sort of starting to get, hopefully, some wheels in motion. What can we expect from those two, do you think? Yeah, well, I, I think, you know, in terms of looking at the tournament generally, the, the form that Nelly Cord has shown, that, can she maintain that on the one hand? But I think you, know, you know, Charlie in particular has shown such consistency of performance. When she's not been unwell, she's been right up the top. And I think that if you're there and there and there and there, at some point, you've got to go over the line. Um, and it's the all-around game, I think. And she, she kind of plays the sort of game when she's on. Um, you know, she plays an aggressive game. And if the course conditions suit that, then, then she could really go. And Georgia, proven major winner already. Yeah. Um, a more conservative style of golf, um, but you know, quality players, and I think it's really exciting to see, you know, especially on the back of what they've been doing training-wise as yeah, well, how, how they progress through the course of the year. Yeah, mm. fantastic stuff, and of course we wish them both lots of luck. So that brings us nicely on to uh, a, a new partnership, 
uh, that we are embarking on with mm. uh, something that's very close to our heart. So we're going to get two representatives on, in on the show here, mm. uh, Jane and Katrina, come and join us. I'll go this so you can go near the mic. Yes. <laughs> Good evening, <laughs> Jane. Nice Hello, Stuart. See you. Hi, hi. See, I often get comments on my clothing, and now I look demure, yeah. which is quite <laughs> nice. Yeah. But do you notice yeah. that I've sort of toned my trousers with the... Oh, the very, very nice. Sort of very nice. Like I thought the the yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Now, uh, this is an exciting opportunity for us, and hopefully mm. you feel similar. Uh, Precision Golf are going to be sponsoring the Surrey Ladies Golf uh, for 2024 and no doubt on in many years to come. What does this partnership offer as an opportunity? We know what the opportunity is for us, of course, and we'll talk about that, but what does it offer in a way of opportunity for the ladies that play within Surrey Golf? Well, I mean, it's fantastic for us because obviously we've got the support of Precision Golf and all the things that you offer. Um, we've got this very nice new stash now with uh, the merch with Precision Golf on our sleeves, which is marvellous. Um, and also some other kit for our teams, which is great. But of course you bring um, so many other aspects as well with the club fitting and the training. And so we're hoping to build on that and, and make that available to some of the women and girls in Surrey. So you're, you're captain this year, 2023, 2024. So you're, you're going to take the credit for bringing PG on board. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> and Katrina, your vice captain. Uh, so, so, what does your role uh, entail? I, I, I do everything Jane tells me to do. Really, <laughs> solid partnership. Yeah, yeah. Solid <laughs> partnership. I'll be captain for the next two years afterwards. So, hopefully, we'll continue to work with the Precision Golf then. And mm. so, you're fresh off the back of the Surrey Ladies Champs, yes, uh, major, of, major the of the year, early in the year, but at a fantastic venue mm -hmm. at Hankley Common. And, and the wonderful Harry G uh, closed that out at the weekend. And uh, what was the score in the end? Uh, she won two and one. But I mean, we had uh, the 36 hole qualifier on Friday. And uh, the winner of that actually was Abby Rowlands, who had a 36 score of 148. And mm -hmm. Harry was um, close behind that. I can't actually remember what her score was. but. Behind one behind and um, I mean the Hankley was just magnificent I mean the course was just everybody was raving about it um, I would say that also because it's my home club mm -hmm. but yeah. um, the uh, the girls played really really well and then the knockout the top 16 went through to the weekend and in the quarterfinals I mean it was birdie 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 going on uh, absolutely fabulous and the semi-finals it was stunning. They both went to the 18th. Oh, did they really? Yeah. Harry beat um, Hunji Kim from Royal Wimbledon. And, um, and they, both, they both birdied the 18th. Yeah. But uh, Hunji had to try and get an eagle to win it, but uh, she didn't quite manage that. But it was is great result. Is the 18th par 5 for ladies? It's par 5 for ladies. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, Harry hit a nice, I think, three wood and an iron onto the green and uh, just missed her eagle putt. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, so the the team you've just announced the ladies A team. Yes, we've announced the first the team. First team. We'd love, we'd love, brilliant. Well, we'd love to hear who those players are and, and hopefully. Well, I uh, my list so did you now? Because <laughs> there are ten of them and I might not. You mean yeah? Team. There's a lot of names. So <laughs> so <laughs> let's let's have a little read out of those. Okay. Well, we've got obviously county champion Harry mm. G from Burr Hill. Uh, we've got Ava Bates from Wentworth. Um, Hunji Kim from Royal Wimbledon, Ellie Monk from Sunningdale. Um, then we've got the Peaford twins, Annabelle and Emily, mm. both from Walton Heath, Abby Rowlands from Fox Hills, Chloe Ryan from Sunningdale, Lottie Woodham from West Hill, and Ellen Yates from West Hill. And what are the range of handicaps for the ladies, roughly? Obviously, I wouldn't hold you to every handicap. Are they all sc scratch or better, or yeah, they're, they're all scratch better or better? Scratch, scratch, yeah. I mean, I think so four, up to about four and a half, I think. Yeah. Yeah, Ellen, who's um, over in, th um, where she's in Houston, um, she's off plus 4.5, something like that. But um, all of them are plus. I think that was the thing that was noticeable. Uh, James and I were there yesterday afternoon and noticeable for the scoring, but the depth now. And as you've got you know, Lottie over in the US as well, who's just, you know, another oh. you know, rather small trophy. Yes. She's <laughs> just come away that we were talking about last week. But uh, I think that, that's something that in, in Surrey as a county, we're, we're blessed with some great courses, but a, a real depth of talent. Uh, amongst yeah. all, all the ladies playing. Well, well it's uh, interesting. Sorry, sorry, I was just going to say, yeah, Ellen Yates, one of the uh, players, the one at Houston, she won the English Amateurs uh, match play yeah. last year. Yeah, she did. so, yeah, we have 
collected mm. or the players have collected, not <laughs> us, some uh, good awards. Great honours. Yeah. I know, and in fact, when we were trying to decide on the team, we were puzzling over who should we pick, you know, and we had 12 plus handicappers um, mm. to go through. And um, one of our coaches was saying any other county would be crying out for just half of those players to be able to choose from. And, you know, we're just so blessed in Surrey with strength and depth. I think a lot of that goes down to because of the golf courses that Surrey are so lucky to have, aren't they? And, and if you're playing great golf on these golf courses, you are going to travel around the world playing great golf, aren't you? If you're carrying a handicap for scratch, you're better on the Walton Heaths, the Burr Hills, the Wentworths. So it really holds them in good stead. So we are incredibly fortunate to have the golf courses and then yeah. the depth of amount of ladies that want to play. And I think that's probably testament to what you're doing. And that's certainly what we got so excited about it, of trying to develop the ladies side of our business mm. and try to help ladies that play the game in Surrey. What does the landscape look like over the next 12 months for the opportunities of the competitions that the ladies can play in? Is there a, is there a long list of uh, events? I mean, uh, there's a huge amount of things going on in Surrey because we host about, or well not host, but we put on about um, between 20 and 30 competitions a year. And that, that though, covers all um, handicap age, um, range and also age range. So, you know, we're here not just for the elite, but also mm. for all uh, women golfers in Surrey. So we've, uh, we've got a stack of things, but, but also for the, I mean, we were just discussing for the elite players, um, the calendar is packed. You know, it's uh, difficult to find uh, times for uh, where things don't clash. So we've got our junior championships coming up in at the end of May. Um, and then we've got the seniors Senior championship. championship in June. Um, the county match week, which we're taking that team to, is actually early July. Um, and we're very hopeful we might qualify for national finals, which is in September. Um, Where's so that being held? Stover. Okay. Is that in Devon? Yes. I think. <laughs> <laughs> we think. The regional ones have been held at North Hants. Mm. Sorry. Yes. Sorry. Good golf yeah. course, North Hants, isn't it? It is, yeah. And the, the teams that you have, you have three levels of teams, is that right? Um, three age, age groups of teams. Well, we also have a second team. Of course you do, of course yeah, you we've do. Got the second team who, oh, and of course, uh, yes, we've got the second team who play um, also county matches um, in the South region for a, a trophy called the Stouffville Trophy. Um, and then the seniors play for a senior scratch league, um, also in the South region. Mm. And then, of course, we've got, I didn't mention, Junior County Match Week, which is in August. And that's at Cruise Hill in Middlesex. Cruise Hill. I've played them many times. <laughs> Cru <laughs> Cruise Hill, mate. Cruise Hill. We go to all the most glamorous places, <laughs> yes. I tell you. And, of course, our, our, our recent acquisition of Henny Koyak, who is obviously now part of the Precision Golf coaching team. Uh, we've got a, a new suite that's being built as we speak mm -hmm. for Henny to do some content, some coaching. So if there are ladies out there or guys, of course, that want to seek out Henny's help, feel free to do so. You can find her <laughs> on our uh, website. Uh, Henny. Yeah, I think she's very, I, mean, I think that's one of the other benefits of the link with Precision Golf is that it's very inspiring seeing, you know, you're linking mm -hmm. with Charlie Hull, Georgia Hall, Henny. I mean, it's, it's, it shows a pathway for the girls, um, different aspects they can go into in golf, even if they don't take up golf full time. Yeah, and they're, they're inspirational figureheads, aren't they? And they're all, they're all very different, Charlie to Georgia to Henny. They've all got different experiences, some with majors, some without, some with TV, some with mentoring. It's a great opportunity, and that's part of the, the, the opportunity that we're going to offer an open day here at Precision Golf, mm. which is going to allow people to come through the door and, and, and see what we offer ladies as well as guys, but fundamentally, initially, ladies to get them into golf and, and showing that it's not an elitist sport, it's about making it very inclusive. What sort of opportunity might that give to youngsters? Well, I mean, I think the, the attraction of having Henny and, and Charlie and Georgia associated with you uh, means that they'll be really keen to come in here, see what you've got, see what you've got to offer, add a bit of fun to it all, Possibly, I know Henny's going to be here, so that'll that'll really inspire them. Um, and I think that that's what we want to do. We want to get our youngsters because we, you know, we've got programs starting from sort of seven upwards. So we get them come in and see you in the morning, and then bring in some of the ladies in the afternoon. Are you going to get yourself in the gym with Kate? You two, <laughs> yeah. high rocks in I it. it. <laughs> no, you don't. I, don't. No, I you saw don't. her um, uh, sort of 
a washboard stomach and thought, blimey, <laughs> I'd love one of those, but I don't think that's possible. We've all got that. Yeah, We've all, all got that, I've but it's all hidden. A couple of layers. A couple of layers. Couple of layers. Couple of layers. Nice layer. yeah. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about y your, your game and, and how have you got into the Surrey Ladies golf side of things? When, when did that develop from your, your perspective? Um, well, I mean, uh, goodness, I'm hard to remember when I got. To, I think I've been involved with Surrey Ladies for about five years now, Brilliant. and uh, it's uh, it's been fun, I have to say. Uh, my golf is uh, is one of those things that I really like to think I'm much better than I am. Don't we uh, all? <laughs> it's the right <laughs> way to be. Very <laughs> frustrating. I don't think um, golf is a good game for perfectionists, and uh, hence I find it even more frustrating. But I'm uh, I'm. I'm sort of blaming the fact that I spend so much time on Surrey stuff that I don't have enough time to practice. Uh, if there was a ladies' golf club over there, I'd get you to hit one because I'd like to see you hit one on TV. But, but, but we won't do that. We won't do that. That, that'd be a bit cool. That'd be a bit cool. Be a bit well, I, I think, uh, I mean, and Simon, anything that, that you'd like to add for this, what, what is a, a landmark event for us? You know, yep. I, we, we haven't joined forces with any counties, with any golf associations. It's really a, a new partnership, and I think we're going to find our feet as we go. And uh, yeah, whatever you want, and whatever I think we're going to make a great team, and hopefully mm -hmm. we can really inspire a lot of young golfers, middle-aged and, and elderly golfers. That's it's just yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Anything that you'd like to add? Well, I think something from our point of view, one is just great timing with, with the other associations and the partners we've got in Henny, and, and yeah. the fact that the other girls are working with Kate in the gym so far. Um, you know, Incy and working with Kate as well. I think you. Know, I, I remember as a youngster being inspired by you know those older than I was playing in the county sides, um, by the pros playing, and and just the enthusiasm again of the game. And we're certainly noticing more ladies coming through and coming in here, which has you know I think historically been viewed as very much a kind of a oh I don't know if that's for me sort of aspect. Mm -hmm. And we it's it couldn't be further from the truth. But I think that's it. Seems feels like the perfect time to sort of accelerate up and, and kind of show what's actually possible for for all golfers out there rather than just v very keen men. Um, and, and so it's relevant to everybody, but I think it's, it's a great way to, you know, it's, it's great to have the partnership to put, the, put it out there and show that it's doable and to, so hopefully get as many people enjoying the game as possible. I think, I think we forget, you know, uh, if we'd have walked in a place at 15, 14, 12 years old and, and saw a young Nick Faldo and Sandy Lyle walking past, mm -hmm. Our jaws would have been on the floor, mm. and we'd have been a, a quiver for the excitement, and yeah. and yeah. that's an opportunity that some of the girls might have that they might brush past Absolutely. a Charlie yeah. coming out of the gym oh, yeah. or Georgia. I mean, what they what what an opportunity! Yeah. Yeah. Well, they'll have to be very early for that. They'll have to be. <laughs> they'll have to be early. We might have groupies. Uh, get used yeah. to getting up early. They do groupies outside, but 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 I think that just shows the, the opportunity yeah. and the excitement yeah. that, that this well, partnership brings. Really looking forward to working with you all mm. and. Uh, and what it might bring for everybody in Surrey, for all the women and girls. And so, so thank you. And so safe. And, and for any watching um, watching this now who want to see how things go, we've got um, Anne Waite, who's involved with Surrey Women's Golf as well. Her fitting is going live onto YouTube tomorrow afternoon. It's tomorrow at six thirty. Mm. So yeah. that will be, that will be aired, <laughs> uh, and so you can see a little bit of how things go on, and and one of uh, your fellow lady lady golfers being fitted. Yes. Fantastic. Super. Thanks so much. Jane Katrina, thank thanks so thank much you. for joining us. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks. Brilliant. Well, I'm now just going to de-mic from the... Uh, Would you like me to clip you in? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you clip me in around the back. If that's possible. Have you got some music there? Play, uh <laughs> Very good. There we go. Very good. Very good. Well, thank you so much to Jane and Katrina for mm. joining us. Farewell, ladies. Mm. Uh, it's a partnership that we are truly truly excited mm. about and i think when we talk about the equipment we've talked about it many times on the show about mm. weight now the stronger you are the more you can overpower a golf club mm. and actually of course the weight is super important for you the weaker you are the more muscle you need to build that the more important that the golf clubs are at that end of the spectrum yeah, yeah, so for whether mm. you're a lady golfer mm. uh you know six stone ringing wet or, or you know a male golfer you know yeah. weighing in at 200 pounds the golf club to you when you're swinging it is super super important and mm. i and i just hope mm. that i think the, the the problem that the ladies have whether it comes to working out in the gym whether they're 
having a golf coaching session or they have been fitted, I think when they feel that it's a male dominated environment, I think it's quite difficult to feel comfortable in the surroundings. Well, and you, I, and you, I, you flip it around, if yeah. it was you know, what, you know, one of us on our own walking into a, a room full of, you, you, you feel self-conscious. That's, right, that's um, right. But I think part of it from, from what we do here, from a fitting standpoint, the options now are better than they've ever been because yeah. there are now more lighter weight options. There are more relevant options, lofted, you know, lofted woods and hybrids to help actually get the best performance for not just lady golfers, for male golfers who've got, you know, whether it's lower speed or lower launch, but particularly for how that's relevant to the ladies' game and, and launching, you know, getting loft and getting flight on the ball. You know, it's more critical at moderate speeds than high speeds to get the ball up quickly and flight it. And there are better options now than they've ever been. Um, mm -hmm. so, so it's a perfect time to get everything going in this respect and the function going as Brilliant. well. Brilliant. Well, let's head over to the live chat to see who we've got on this evening. Uh, Keith L2022. Hi guys, love the show. What data on Trackman would uh, would highlight if someone needed to adjust the lie irons, uh, lie irons of their irons, lie of their irons? Uh, can you show an example of this? Thanks. I mean, I, so for me, with any of the lie measurements on whether it's Trackman or the, the Foresight systems, um, they all have a number on it, but I'm incredibly skeptical of it because there are. Like on the foresight, you've got to stick dots on the face. And one degree on where they sit is, a, is really not very much. So we've had instances where we've fitted for some clubs, measured it with a, a line on the ball, on the, um, marking the face, so you get a true impact of lie on, on dynamically through impact position. Um, that didn't make sense, but I know what I meant. Um, and, and then they've gone away, come back from a coach and gone, oh, I'm, I'm, you know, this lies are seven degrees off. Well, that's just because the dots weren't put on the face correctly. Um, Trapman again give a lie measurement, but again, what are they measuring it off? The cameras and the radar are measuring the ball and the head. So how are they measuring the lie? I'm, I'm a little bit skeptical of any of those numbers on these so, systems. So with Trapman, it's only measuring the head. It can't measure the butt end of the golf club. And at that point, it makes it a inferior reading. Mm. If you're not measuring the butt end of the golf club, you can't get a true angle on the pitch of the swing because the swing circle can be pitched mm. at different at different lines mm. so uh, so I, I the the lie uh, for me swing plane number which is going to affect your lie angle yeah, i think yeah. i think and i think the, the, the best way to do it is buy yourself a chalk pen and then on a ball the dimples there'll be a line in the dimples and you draw a line with the chalk pen down that, you, you place it vertically on the mat, strike it, I'll, I'll do an example, strike it and it leaves a mark on the face. And hopefully, because I'm going to hit one of my, my clubs, hopefully it'll come out where we want it to. So I've drawn a line down the ball here. I'm going to place that so that's absolutely vertical up the, uh, up the mat there. New glove, nice and yep. tight. Freshy, and a then, freshy GX. Then we strike it. And that leaves a line on the face. And you can see from that where that dynamically, where that club's coming in at impact. If the line's pointing towards the toe, then it's too upright. If the line's pointing towards the heel, it's too flat. That is the only true way of recognizing what the lie, how dynamically how that lie is sitting. Um, you can look at path and face to path and say, oh, if, the, if it's starting right, is the, is the uh, lie a little flat? But ultimately, you, you can maneuver the club head and the face angle more than the lie will affect the start angle. So that's the only true way of testing a lie angle. Uh, so a bit of abuse coming already. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Phil. Uh, now, I used to live with the Phil, and I, there's a part of me that feels like this might be him. He said, hi, guys, who is the crazy reporter with the ice cream cone in his hand? Uh, love Simon's swing rhythm, how smooth it looks. How do you train this and still have speed? Uh, well, I think it goes back to 
Well, n not that I've been in the gym very much at all. Um, balance. Balance is a massive key. Um, if you're not grounded and not balanced, you can't. Con you, you're gonna, your posture is going to come out, and you can't control the club. So that's a big, a big thing. Um, I mean, ultimately, practicing moving fast is going to help because you're going to get used to putting the force through through the swing there. But um, I think ultimately, yeah, balance and technique. Good technique allows you to put speed in. Good balance allows you to to deliver the club and stay stable. Um, but those would be the two things for me. Kevin Phillips asks, love the show as always. Driver, movable weight. Move to protect a miss, change flight, influence, close your rate. Pick one. The, um, the biggest thing you're going to change with the weight move, if it's heel to toe, is going to be the gearing on the face, the strike point. So if you move the weight, let me get a head just so it can demonstrate. So I've got on my driver, I've got the weight central. If you were to move the weight towards the toe end, then actually what you're doing is you're moving the center of mass a little bit more towards the toe side of the club head. So what that actually means is when you strike it out the toe, it doesn't kick as much, it doesn't gear as much, you don't get as much hook spin. Um, so it doesn't necessarily hang the face open and create a fade, but it does mean you get less gearing. So if you're striking it out the middle, you're gearing a little bit more of a left to right. Um, if you're a right-handed golfer. Um, and if you move it behind the heel, you move in the center of gravity it's more into the heel side, so a heel strike doesn't gear as much fade. But th that, that it will do more for that than it will do anything else. Niels Axon, uh, good evening, Niels. Nice to have you along with us as usual. Lucky team to get that sponsorship. Well, I think lucky us too. I mean, mm. we're gonna hopefully have an opportunity to chat and scream about precision golf through over 7,000 lady mm. golfers on their, uh, their books, as it were, and, and we're trying to you know, we proud, pride ourselves on being the best in the business. We've got the best fitters. We've got the best chiropractor. We've got the best uh, conditioning coach here working some of the best players in the world mm -hmm. and some of the best golf coaches in the world as well. And so we want to get ourselves in front of people. Mm -hmm. So lucky us for being able to have that opportunity with Surrey Ladies Golf mm -hmm. as, as, well as, as well as for them too, I think. Brian McAllister, Simon, quick question. The PXLZ115G and Modus 3120G appear to be almost same weight, but do they, com uh, do they compare in bend profiles and torque? Um, well, torque steel is very, very low anyway. So you, you, pretty much any steel, you're gonna get a very comparable torque rating. Um, but in terms of bend profile, no, the modus is much softer under the handle. So it's very stable in the tip, softer under the grip end. So um, that's where you get that bit of a feel out of it. Um, but you know, dead weight wise, there's only a couple, one or two grams in it. So they are more of a 115 gram shaft, the modus 120s. The LZs, um, they, they're they not as soft right up in the butt end. They're a little stiffer in the butt, a little softer in the middle. Um, so they're not wildly dissimilar, but the LZs are still gonna play and feel just a little bit stronger. Very good. Aidan, what's, uh, I'll come to a couple of questions I've got over on my channel in a moment. Aidan, what's uh, a shaft, uh, Aidan asks, <laughs> what's a shaft similar to Modus 115X? Uh, only Mizuno seemed to offer it uh, 923 forged with the Modus shaft works well. Is there any head that's similar, but maybe not as hot for a five handicap? Okay, so are we doing a, well, on both head and shaft? Comparison. Uh, what's the shaft similar to the Modus? So, Modus 115 is more like a 118 gram, a um, little stiffer through the midsection. So you could go to, uh, I mean, actually the LZ is not a million miles off, but it'd swing a little bit heavier. Um, I, and there, the KBS is going to be a little high balance. Um, it's another nip on nip on 1150, but again, you're not going to find that too many other places. Though they, that's quite a, a difficult one to match up with something else that's, that's sort of a similar profile, possibly like a 5 0 Project X. That, that's still going to feel a bit more stout, but that's not wildly different. And in terms of a head, the head was a JPX. The JPX uh, of it, 923 forged modus, okay. yeah. So similar, but not as hot. Uh, yeah, the forge is quite a strong flight. If you want a little bit more spin, uh, actually the Cobra, the King Tour, that, that's a good head. Maybe not quite as forgiving, but that, that's a good option for that. Uh, and actually, I mean, the MP243, that's, that's whilst it's an MP model, you still got a bit of face tech on it. That one will retain a little bit more spin. Phil, uh, good to see you guys make my Mondays a little bit better. Any tips against to close the club face at impact? I love to have a release as hard as I want without closing the face. Well, that's, that's quite a, 
a simple one. Let me uh, <laughs> get a golf club. Uh, if you don't really like a club too close at, at, at impact, two ways you can go about it. One, you can weaken off your left hand. Uh, put your thumb a little bit more down the middle, which will make your left hand a little bit weaker. That will allow you to feel a little bit more forearm roll and a little bit more release down at the bottom. The other opportunity is to take your hand and put your palm to the floor and then feel how your forearm rotates and you keep the back of your hand up to the sky. So you're still getting forearm rotation, but yet if you've got that left wrist cupped through strike, that club face will still swing. So there's the swing, there's the cup. You can see how that club face is still open. If the club swings and you flatten off your left wrist, you can see how you turn the face down. Bowing your left wrist or flattening off your left wrist through strike is widely used to offset a handle that's rising up and pushing out to the right. Then you turn and flatten your left wrist, it turns the face down. So that would be my way of getting you to have a release but without feeling the face that closed with those two little tips. Hopefully that helps. Very good. Yeah, very good. And let's just go one more on the coaching side. Uh, Jeff Berger, nice to see you again. Jeff, please explain Scotty Sheffer's downswing footwork. It's a mystery to me. Oh, <laughs> he's, he's doing an Irish jig. Yeah, I mean, there's been there's been many there's been many um, uh, analysis of, of Scotty Scheffler's mm. uh, golf swing, but principally when you when you make a downswing, your feet when you're in rotation are actually creating force this way to make you spin your body around. So as I'm, as I'm pulling on the ground, my left foot is actually driving force forwards and my right foot is actually driving force backwards. And that's why you see his feet move this way and, and obviously then where he's in rotation, it then kicks through. So if you were to stand uh, when it's winter time and go steady on this, or if you were to stand on two baking trays, huh. bear with me, <laughs> Two baking trays. I'll tell you a good way of doing it, actually. Have we got another one of these? Anywhere? Certainly do. So this is a hip board, and of course it slides on the mat. So when I come to swing in a moment, you will see what happens with my feet. So my, this could end nastily in tears, this, but we'll go with it. Oh, the torn groin. Yeah, yes. So here I am. So I've now got no traction on the mat. I now go to the top of my backswing and I pull the club down. You can see that as soon as I pull the golf club down, you can see the direction my feet go in. And well, that's, you're demoing this, not me. And that's, pure, and that's purely the, the reason why Scotty Scheffler's feet move the way they do. It's just that his feet are pushing so hard, they're lifting off of the floor. So when they push super hard, they then lift up off the floor, no traction and the feet move. But that is the direction of force that is going through your feet. Mm. So try it with a baking tray and that's, your feet will yeah. be doing exactly the same thing, but your feet don't push hard enough and so they don't leave the ground enough. And so therefore you don't see the reaction that you do tend to see. But most golfers yeah. are pushing too far forwards, which makes them end up on the toes of their feet, which would mean that these would actually slip back that way. Both of them would slip back that way, which makes you fall forwards. Mm. So if you were to make those boards move, as I just demonstrated, you would actually improve your, your footwork. But ultimately, golfers in the main don't use their feet the way mm. we should be because we always have a golf club in our hands and we think that that is the fuel for the, for the golf club, yeah. just our shoulders. And then you get to someone saying, well, I don't want to use my shoulder. I've got to stop my right shoulder yeah. coming over the top. Now all of a sudden you're not using your feet, you're not using your shoulders. And all you're left with is some hands down at the bottom. It's like, yeah. you, know, take, you move more, don't move less. And mm. so really that, get a couple of baking trays, have a go, that, that'll work. That's why when it's wet, there's dew on the ground, you've got soft spikes on, that back foot goes, boom, goes goes on you and that's why you know that's what you see then so yeah, yeah. um so tony by the way uh, hi simon it is uh, is it 
easier to square the face and hit a draw with a smaller center of gravity forward head than a more forgiving weight back driver head? If yes, which 2024 head do you think is the best compromise? Um, so for some players, it absolutely is. Um, so I'm one of these, if I, because I have a little bit of forearm roll on my swing, if I open it, I then have to shut it on the back, on the through swing. And the further the weight is away from the hosel, the more you've got to work to get that through. So for me, it tends to open the face if you've got a, a deep weighted forgiving club head. So um, that's why I'm in TSR3, because it's a little bit more of an evenly weighted head. But things like, you know, the Paradigm, Triple Diamond, where you can put the weight at the front, um, now in TSR4, you can put the weight at the front, but any of the smaller, the, the low spin models where there's more weight further forward in the head will be easier to, if you have that bit of rotation, that you're going to have to impart less force to get that toe coming around. Um, as to whether there's a best compromise, it depends what your spin level is as to what the best head is. Um, for me, TSR was best because it wasn't overly low spin. Uh, and there is for some, some players like the, the the AI smoke triple diamond with the weight forward is a super low spin head and that, that would be the best one. But um, so it depends which, what your spin profile is as to which head's best as an overall. AQ, us mere mortals, mortals feel starstruck when Simon walks past, don't worry, we all feel the same when he walks past. I feel past. very sorry for you. <laughs> they, they, Dave Hurley, nice color matching gray and black top and gray and black hair. Thank you very much, Gray. Uh, Dave, that's much appreciated. <laughs> Thanks, Graham, for a quick reminder. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Robin Morton, great to see the ladies pushing golf forwards for mm. them. Any drills to increase arm and hand speed? I'm 65, 10.8 handicap, and thinks I have maxed out my body rotation, 85 miles an hour of driver club head speed. Well, a bit of hand speed. Mm. The easiest way to, to try to get a bit of hand speed is as light a grip, poss grip pressure as possible. The trouble with that is that when you do start to create lighter grip pressure and you're trying to look for a little bit more speed at the bottom, when you pull the golf club, the club feels like it's almost slipping out of your hands. And I think that's the problem when you're trying to create more speed, feeling like that the club's not moving as much. Because if you think about it, if you put, let's come up to the camera here, is that okay there, James? So can you see my skin is moving by just laying my hand on the grip? Now, if I grip my club super tight, I stop that from happening. And so what you feel is this vice-like grip on the golf club, no flexion almost of your skin. And so you kill out any opportunity to have a light grip and a golf club that actually is going to feel like it's moving around in your hand. And I think if you could get your grip pressure to a point where you feel the club moving in your hands, you would really start to create more leverage on the way down. And if you're creating more leverage, more load, you'll get more swing at the bottom. And to then encourage that more without encouraging your body to turn, just put your feet together and then just start to make some swings where you're feeling like you can pull the club and then let it swing down at the bottom. So you get that load and swing. Mm. And all the time you take your body out of it by putting your feet together, you already start to feel that swish. But mm. the pull phase with a light mm. grip and feeling like the club's coming out of your hands a little bit is, is crucial. Make sure you've got a good grip though, because that, be that will be really important. But mm. club speed has to come from levers. You can't really get club speed from anything other than, of course, you're getting your feet in, involved. But if you haven't got good leverage, you're always gonna battle with hand speed and speed down at the bottom. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, tight muscles equal slow muscles. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. very much so. Um, so, who, where are we here? So, AQ, AQ again, Robin Morton, uh, Robin Morton, super speed spins trainer. Okay, yeah, so a AQ is advising to mm. do the super speed. Just, just uh, we've talked about it on the show before, just go steady with those. If you start swinging like a whirling dervish in the back garden and your body's a little bit broken, you can make yeah. it even more broken. So, mm. so do go careful with those super speeders. Uh, Mike T, hi guys, as a cast of the golf club, do you think handle dragging on backswing is opposed to early wrist set will help. So if you're a caster mm. of the golf club, casters of golf clubs are usually about trying to make the face square itself up. Mm. So my advice to you would be 
quite simply go stronger with the grip, go lighter with your grip, and then pull the club harder. Mm. Because casting the golf club is a quick fire way for a golfer to try to square the face. Because the more that you cast the club away, down at the bottom, the club's unloading and is actually squaring the face up. So as soon as you then load it and take yeah. away the cast, the face, if the face is open, the ball will now go right, and then you'll be back to casting again. So yeah. the cast yeah. is actually helping you, not hindering you. So you need to put something in place to stop the cast, so that if you do cast it, you should see a hook. Then when you yeah. cast it and you see a hook, you then need to fix the cast. But at the moment when you hit a, throw a cast, yes, you feel less power, but fundamentally the ball still goes straight for you. Mm. And at the time the ball keeps on going straight, you need to make something, you need to change something to make the ball go offline. And that's a stronger face. So that when you cast it, it hooks. Then you can load it, more lag, and the ball will go back to straight. So go with a stronger grip first. Mm. If hopefully that makes sense. Nice easy one. Yeah. <laughs> um, so AQ is talking to Mike T, so we'll leave that one. Thoughts on things, uh, which is strap line, very good. Hi guys, love this show, thanks for all the videos, you are very welcome. Uh, was wondering if you had any views on Titleist T100 versus the Mura MC502s. I haven't seen a single video on these compa comparisons, thank you. Uh, let me get them, I'll have them. give them a hit. Let me, let Simon wander off and get that. I'll get back over here and do a little question on my channel uh darren cope love the show uh i've got my first lesson with stuart on thursday after not having any coaching for a few years can't wait darren i have emailed you uh, if you want to grab that email looking forward to seeing you spanish fly 026 uh, i have a stealth two driver and even when i loft up my spin numbers are too low can i change the weights on the head to help with that and how much should I change it by? Still, too, uh, and ultimately, you're not going to change the spin profile very much just by moving the weights. By moving the center of gravity a little bit, it, it's not going to make a dramatic difference. And on that head, there's not enough on that stealth too. You're moving it toe and heel, not front and back. So really, it's a dynamic loft thing. Uh, if, you, if you're hitting it high, minimize the loft. Uh, and then if that's still not enough, then it's a technique thing. Yep, very good. Um, Lee Roberts, hey guys, hope you enjoyed the Masters. Was wondering if you could give the Ping 10K a hit with the new Ventus Velocore Plus. Uh, what, do you, uh, what are your thoughts of the driver and who's it best suited for? Um, the 10K is very, very, very stable, really good across the face, good for spin. Um, it's got that deep weighting, so some players will have that face open up a little bit. It, it's actually a real mixture. A lot of the high speed players are using it to not to not give up too much off center. So it allows them to really go after it and not lose too much performance. Um, but equally speaking, it's also very good for someone who does tend to hit it a little bit off center. Um, it, it retains performance really well. So it's actually got quite a broad, um, a broad sort of spectrum of players that it could suit. Um, but it's just a really well engineered head that's given a bit more forgiveness, maxed out the forgiveness side, but hasn't compromised spin as much as normally one would have to. Let's see you take the stage here. So, T100 first, so what the, the differences between the heads, so um, the MC502 Mira and the T100, if we have those both here, so the Mira here and the T100 um, above, so let's pull those in a little bit closer. So what we have on the T100 is some tungsten heel and toe, um, so there's a little bit more weight down the bottom of the head and then spread to the sides to give it stability off center. With the mirror head, as you can see, it's centered mass in the middle there. So a little bit of weight at the bottom and then a, a bar, weight of bar, bar, weight of bar, bar of weight in the middle to kind of help to solidify strike. Now that bar moves up and down the head through the set. So it gets a little bit taller into the short arms, shallower into the long arms to help move center of gravity. So ultimately the 502 is moving weight up and down the head uh, and the, the tightness is moving more weight heel and toe. So, um, in principle, what you get is, you know, the T100 is a mid-launch, mid-spin head, um, very neat profile, kind of player's profile, um, but produces very much kind of mid-spin performance. So uh, on that particular shot there, five and a half thousand revs, kind of mid-launch, um, but that, that weighting heel and toe gives you some margin of error off-center, so helps just get a little bit of a better 
performance across the face. Um, but you know, a little lower on the face there, but maintain five and a half thousand revs of spin. Swap it out to the mirror head, very, very much a kind of classic, a real purist head. Um, you know, technically they would call it a forgiving blade. Uh, I would argue that doesn't really exist, um, but ultimately it's a blade with a little bit of progressed weighting kind of up and down the face. Um, very, very neat, clean, traditional head, very little offset. The Titus has a hair more offset, um, but slightly heavier head weights on the mirrors as well. Uh, and yeah, this head's not really gonna give you any major forgiveness. but it's an incredibly solid feel. Um, so, you know, that one there, a little bit lower spin. So where the type, this is move weight, heel and, heel and toe, spins it up a little bit more. So it's a slightly stronger, for me, it's a slightly stronger flight off this head. Um, but having played a blade for the last 20 odd years, um, this just means you get maximum feedback off the head. In principle, maximum front and back distance control, but don't thin one in the winter. Yes. Not good for the fingernails. Nicely Feel demonstrated gorgeous, there. Though. Nicely demonstrated there. A uh, question for Simon. Why would you fit people for graphite in general? Do you come across players who swing fairly quick or does it only suit slower swings? Absolutely suit. It can suit a, a huge variety. I mean, if it, if it only suited slower swings, you wouldn't find Bryson using them. Yeah. Um, so actually at the heavier weights, uh, there's a lot of material in the shaft and structure, they're more rigid than you can get steel. Um, because there's much more wall thickness, much more material in the shaft. So really you're using historically used graphites to raise the balance point up the shaft a little bit more. It's possible to go lighter because of the amount of material in the wall. So you can't get steel to the 40, 50 gram weights, or if you could, there'd just be no structural strength there. So really you're using dead weight. So yes, go on the lighter side for, for a graphite quite often, um, but because it's physically impossible to get a, a, a cost-effective playable steel shaft at that weight. Um, but it's also shifting balance point and feel. The thinner wall on a steel shaft can give you more responsiveness. A graphite can dampen down a bit of vibration if you've got a wrist injury, things like that. So there are multiple uses for both steel and graphites, but it's absolutely not just that you've got to go, you've got to go light if you're low speed and you're always going to be in graphite if you're low speed, or you're always going to be steel if you're high speed. It can be both either. Sash man swag is in the house ah, super nice to meet you recently, yeah. yeah super nice to meet you and mm. your dad a few weeks ago mm. just down the end there in mm. the fitting base super nice loving the streams as always guys loved my fitting with you all thank you so much thank it you. was nice to have you down mm. uh min sock park i had an amazing fitting session with simon today the session was exactly what i wanted and expected simon is a real maestro and i strongly recommend uh, the PG fitting experience. Oh, very kind. Very yeah. Looking forward to seeing him in stock for the second half of the fit yeah, on Thursday. AQ. Mm. Uh, very good swing for his handicap as well. AQ, Sign him up for a yeah. better ball partner if, you uh, know, if anyone who knows him. Yeah, AQ obviously knows him because Minsock Park second that. He's a top bloke. Mm. Uh, Golf Nerd 3. Who were your favourite American players growing up and now? Good question. Ooh, Give us two. American players growing up. Um, Freddie Couples for me. And I think it was the Ryder Cup was a, was not not the friendliest affair at that time. Yeah. So um, yeah. I quite liked Corey Pavin. He was a bit quirky, wasn't he? I wasn't a fan of Corey Pavin at that time. I, no, I yeah. just just I because I think because of how good he was in the Ryder Cup, he used to wind me right yeah. up. I admired, I admired his ability. Certainly, Freddie Couples definitely. Um, Give us one more. Uh, I mean, Watson was still kind of in yeah. playing around and so yeah. and back then Tom Watson. Yeah. Uh, now, no, we didn't say now. I did not growing, say now. No. Oh, I thought it was growing, now as well. Yeah, grow, yeah. Uh, growing up. Oh, growing up and now. And Are you now. dead? I yeah. beg your pardon. Yeah. I beg your pardon. Um, and now. I like Tony Fee now. I think yep. he comes across very well. Yep. Um, who else do I? Who else do I actually really kind of warm to? Um, I like Max Homer. I quite like how he sort of comes with his funny comments on Instagram and replies to people. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think he's, he's good. And, and his swing's just stupidly pretty yeah, yeah. I, I i i like the humbleness of, of ricky fowler he's been mm. through a tough time i think yeah. he's i think he's got uh, he's a man of honor dignity mm. uh, yeah I, I really like him uh and i also like cameron champ 
I think he's got a very uh, nice golf swing yeah. and uh, the way he moves it. Yeah, mm. so very good. Uh, Dave Hurley, great show once again, guys. Thank you so much, Dave. Yep. Really appreciate it. Tony, by the way, 2600, 2800 spin, too much. Again, there are a couple of other parameters like angle attack and launch angle. So if you're yeah. a a bit of a trapper of a ball and a lower launch, that's actually a really nice spin window. If you hit up in it four degrees and launch it at 16, that's too much. Very good. Robin Morton, uh, thank you for the grip. Uh, watched your grip video numerous times. White strip uh, on back of your T-shirt is, is nearly spectacular. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much. Someone actually liked what I'm wearing for once. Uh, Minsock Park, uh, AQ, I was starstruck today being at Precision Golf headquarters, mm. getting fit by Simon, seeing Mark, James, Matt walking around. Didn't see Stuart today, though. No, I've just flown in from Italy mm. today, so uh, I wasn't here, unfortunately. Uh, hopefully, I'll get to see you next time. AQ, uh, enjoying the chat show. Thanks, mm. as you are welcome. James Young, hi, guys. May have been asked in the past. That's all right. It doesn't matter. The, you ask us. Many questions. I've got right. that 10 k event. Yes, that's right. But how does the Modus 130X shaft compare to the Project X 6.5 uh, and the DG X 100? Thanks, James. So the Modus 130X is actually lighter. So that's a 120. Ironically, it's a 125, 26 gram shaft. The DG X 100 is 131, 132, and the Project X 6.5 is about 128. The Project X is going to feel more stout through the midsection than any other. It's a really stiff shaft through the middle. Um, so if you're someone who kind of pulls hard loads on it and wants to feel kind of uh, kind of tightness to the shaft, that's a great option. Um, the Modus is a little less tip balanced. It's a more evenly weighted shaft, but the tip's a little bit more responsive, stiffer in the butt section. Uh, and then the Diamond Gold, the X100 is pretty stout all the way through, but it's, it's a very neutrally weighted shaft. So the, in terms of feeling of stiffness, I would think it would go Project X, Dynamic Gold, Modus, in that order. Go get that. Go was it 10K and what was the, what yeah. was it the, the new, ve new Velocor? New Velocor, yeah. yeah, New Velocor. I will answer a question from the coaching channel. Um, Lee Roberts, keep up the good works. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Lee. Baptiste uh, Van Quem. Uh, hello, guys. Thank you for the work you put on here. You are very welcome. Game changer, thank you so much. Could you please explain how exactly uh, how exactly the release happens and give some tips for where I need to make that happen with the driver? Or I mean, uh, exactly how the release works? Well, this just <laughs> I mean, it's, it's like just explain golf. <laughs> uh, you got to understand first of all and foremost, this is a lever system, uh, so you are swinging. A heavy end and you are pulling on the light end so when you pull on the golf club we should have some form of pull with the handle and what you should start to see is a reaction of the lever becoming more narrow and at that point down at the bottom the handle will slow down and the club will swing now how that club swings will be determined by how you put your hands on the golf club if you have a grip that is on the weak side of life and that is with a thumb that is down the center what you will tend to have is a release pattern where you turn the club face to the floor because as the club comes in the face is looking up to the sky and as you then swing the lever down at the bottom if you don't get the face looking back down to the ground you're going to invariably hit the ball to the right if you were to apply that exact same release pattern with a grip where you had your thumb down the right side of the golf club. Because of the way the club now comes into the ball, it no longer looks up to the sky. As you now release that golf club and you turn the face back down to the ground in exactly the same way as it did on the first one, you'll now see the ball go way off to the left. So ultimately, how you release the golf club will go hand in hand with the way you put your hands on the golf club. And then, how that face is orientated in the swing will ultimately dictate whether you are a puller of the golf club or if you are a caster of the golf club. Those are the definitive factors of how you use the levers in your swing. That sits up at the top. The hierarchy from there on after it, how you use your feet, how you use your chest and your shoulders will go hand in hand with that. But if you haven't got 
a grip that allows you to load the shaft, you're gonna really struggle to open your pelvis up, use your feet and use your chest. So really understand how the grip and the levers work to make you create speed down at the bottom of the ball. So it's a big topic that, I mean, I could spend five hours on that, but hopefully. Yeah. So it's nice, quick, quick, quick answer. Quick, quick so we point. have the uh, 10K Max driver in a nine degree, and I've got the Velocore, new Velocore Plus in the 6S, because that's relevant to my weight, or the weight that I swing. Um, so basically with the 10K, very light crown, light through the middle, heavy weight at the back, lots of stability. Um, this, we've been finding the Velocore Plus a little lower spin. I have certainly been finding a little lower spin than the original model Ventus, but a little bit more responsive to swing. So, go on, let's drive a swing of the day, it'll be interesting. Actually drove it very well last week. Did Com you? So, no. Back from week off. Down here, yeah, 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 down there. Uh, so yeah, that's on, a nice, oops, that's a nice just shot. Just to see where the strike was, but that's a little bit, I think that was a little bit necky, a little bit spinny. Um, it's a very, very stable feeling shaft. So when you get to impact, it feels really nice and tight, but you get a little bit of load through the midsection on the way down. Um, head, I mean, part of it is it's quite hard to know where you hit it because the head stays really stable through contact. So if you're, there are certain heads as fit as we've used, if you get someone who hits it all over the face, you don't necessarily want them to realize. There are certain heads that have been good for that. Like in the past one, the Cobra head is brilliant for that. This is another one. So if you get someone who can has a bit of a st struggle with confidence and worries about a strike point, this is a great head because you don't know whether you've hit it, particularly at the toe or the heel. Um. So There's a man that's been playing fairly, a lot of golf just recently. I felt a fairly solid hit. So yeah, so it's you know, kind of fairly kind of mid, mid spin, mid to low mid spin. Um, again, really, really stable. You don't get a lot of, you get very little twisting of the head through impact. Um, especially if you miss hit it, it kind of holds on really well. Uh, the shaft does that as well. So actually if you're looking for mid to low spin, a little bit of response from the shaft, and but loads of stability from the head. That, if the um, shaft weight and the profile works for you, is a great combo. So we're getting close to the end here. So we, we always try to get through them, but there's too many on here. So if you are, new to the show do get in early i know we had a couple of guests on tonight which has just curtailed the mm. the answering of the questions but um, quick fire as many as we yeah, can yeah absolutely absolutely uh tom ashmore evening gents when fitting irons do you fit many gap wedges as part of the set rather than a specialist wedge um yeah it's a little bit more a spread now i think you go with a set gap wedge rather than a specialist gap wedge if it's more of a full shot club so the shorter version of pitch wedge if you're playing lots of knockdown three-quarter shots uh, feely shots, then the outer set wedge tends to be designed for that, whereas for a stock swing, set gap wedge is good for that. James Ferguson, hi, I'm a bit of an engineering geek. Mm -hmm. Could Simon give an opinion on the Cobra King tour irons, which I play really like the softer feeling of the four uh, forged versus the G Mar equivalent? Yeah, so um, what the G Mar's got because of the, the, the vacuum in the middle and the double layer of the face, it does produce a little bit of clickier note because because it's hollowed out. Um, and since you've got the foam filling, or the foam, the, 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 the filling in the back of the uh, King tour head does is it dampens that sound and dulls it down. So you get a softer sound, you get, you get a less clicky sound. So that is why it feels softer. Very but good. both great heads. Uh, AQ, the hidden gem in PGHQ is the putter fitting area, in my opinion. Uh, best way to shave the most strokes off the score, it sure is. But unfortunately, it can be one of the most boring areas. Who wants to hit putts when they could be smashing drivers? Van House, uh, hi guys. Can a too heavy driver wood shaft promote more of a heel strike? Uh, it can do. Um, in terms of it gets behind as you move through, the club gets a little stuck and then it tends to move out, excuse where the hands are going, it tends to move out and that can, if from a release pattern, that is what happens. If you lift the handle up, it pushes it out, out that way and moves the heel towards the ball. Uh, so yes, it certainly can do. Uh, thoughts on things. Thanks guys. Another question, if you have time, if you weaken the loft by two degrees on a Titleist one T150, would it essentially be the same as a T100? No, um, no, because the channel, once you get to seven iron up, the channel is engineered to give a little bit more ball speed and it will still be a little bit of a lower spin head. Glenn 400 and is, more bounce then as well. is Simon booked up? Uh, I couldn't find him as an option in the fitting. 
So if you want a fitting with me specifically, give the studio a call or email in. My diary isn't live on, or isn't visible online because otherwise I'd be booked up through July. But I, I do have some fittings. Um, first half of March, uh, May, I still have some fittings available then. Very good. Uh, Thank you for wanting to come and see me. Yes, for, for sure. Uh, John Dorensky just turned on in time, caught sight of the Mura, then looked at our lass and found myself comparing the two. No contest, Mura won. Joking apart, do you stock the full Mura range? Uh, we do currently, yes. Jeff Berger, should wrists break or remain firm in the putting stroke? Just depends which you prefer. There are golfers mm -hmm. that, like Tiger, putted very, very well with wrist set, and there were putters that did very well, like with Lauren Roberts, that didn't have wrist set. Mm -hmm. So uh, both work, just depends what you're looking for. Uh, Baptista makes sense, you're welcome. Uh, Lee Roberts, by altering the loft on the driver uh, sleeve, e.g. nine degrees after sleeve to 9.7 uh, stroke 10, how much would spin differ, if anything? Thanks, Lee. Probably only 100 revs, 100, 100 revs or so. Um, it's not gonna make a massive difference. The launch angle got half a degree, but you'll pick up at the top end, 150 revs, maybe 100 or so. And there, my God, friend, not going quick. that is mm. super fast, mm. super fast. So uh, the week ahead, obviously, we're super excited to see how Charlie and Georgia do mm. uh, yeah. out in the US. I'm thick and fast, the tournaments yeah, now. They, mm. they really are. They really are. We have got some really exciting new content coming out. We've got mm. a new videographer that is, if you haven't seen our most recent content, mm. uh, he's um, now coming in and, and shooting a lot of the, uh, the, the fittings and the product Smart. reviews. Up close and personal. Yeah, I saw yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, it's really, really good. Yeah. And hopefully it's yeah. taking our content to a whole mm. new level. Busy week ahead for you as usual. Busy week, catching up. I had a couple of days down at the tournament last week, yeah. so catching up. Yeah, uh, good few meetings next couple of days, loads of fittings. Fantastic. All good. Fantastic. Mm. We will be here next week at six mm. o'clock. We want to say a big thanks to Jen, uh, Jane and Katrina mm. for joining us this evening. Uh, a bit nerve-wracking for, for anyone coming on the mm. YouTube channel, uh, but we're really excited about mm. that partnership. We also want to say a big thanks to you for joining us every week and sending in your questions. From Simon and I, have a great week and we'll see you next week.